Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I will talk about ProSoft and how the ProSoft actually divvy up their internal register and how does that translate to your Ellen Bradley uh, PLC tag name. Let's get started. So I have a ProSoft uh, file here. We double clicked it to open it. And a few moments, you'll open it up. Okay, now we have this here. So if I were to expand this a bit and I have a look at it, and expand this and expand this module and this is where you define your register allocation here so if I double click this guy here you know what let me close this first let me park this on the side and I'm gonna open uh, another spreadsheet here this is my own spreadsheet it's not from ProSoft this is to keep my sanity check I guess so if I open this guy up here okay so I've created some sort of like a tabular stuff uh, tabular section where I know where things are. I'm just going to make it a bit larger here. So let me explain to you how this works. So if I double click on my module, it comes up with this. So my read register starts at 1000 and it goes all the way to 2000. Okay, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to put this to 1. So it starts at 1000 and ends at 1999 because a total of 1000 registers. And my write starts at 0 and the total is 1000 so it starts at 0 and goes all the way to 9999 so how how this thing looks like on a tabular form let me show you if i if you focus here on this side here so i say right starts at 0 so it starts at 0 and goes all the way a thousand registers which is 999 here so there's a thousand registers that's allocated for writing so Let's say, for example, if you're reading 40,000, register 40,001, you can allocate in here, and there'll be 16-bit allocation. So let's look at the read register. So read register starts at 1,000, right here, and then it goes all the way to 19999. So it's 1,000 registers in total, so if I scroll all the way down, you can see it goes all the way down. So that might be pretty obvious for some of you, but a quick start go uh, start for uh, someone who is not familiar with how uh, internal registers are set up so each of this number is 16 bit like i said but let's say if you have to read a coil or write a coil let's start off with write a coil what index do you use so the rule of thumb is that if it starts at zero your internal register will be zero times 16 so which means your first bit will start at zero second bit will start at one two three and so on all the way to 15 and the next 16 bit will start from 16 17 18 19 all the way to 32 right i mean 31 i guess and then so on so this is your index internal registers are uh, allocated for your bit that's on the right side right writing on the reading side since you start at a thousand and go all the way to one nine 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 you have to take the first address, which is 1000, multiply that by 16. So your very first internal address for your bit will be 16,000. And the next one will be 16,001, 16,002, and 16,003, all the way to 16,015. And the next one, next block of internal 16-bit register will be 16,016, 16,017, all the way to 16,031, and so on. I think you know what I mean. So this is how the uh, ProSoft allocate their, their internal registers for 16-bit uh, numbers for reading and 16-bit uh, uh, number and also for a coil or a bit itself. And for write, similar. Okay, the takeaway is you take this, multiply by 16, take this, multiply by 16, and so on. So that's why I said this table is pretty handy. This is what I use for all my projects. So a couple of another key pointer to note is that you can see that I've allocated uh, 0 to 1,000. So read registers, I have a total of 1,000. And write registers, I have a total of 1,000. So there's a total of 10,000 internal registers you can use, whichever way you want. But a couple of things you have to remember. So I start here at 0 to nine, uh, 1,000 registers, which is 999. And I start my read registers at 1,000 and go all the way to 1,999. So for, for an instance, if I decide to increase this by, say, 
2000. What I have to do here on the read uh, to prevent it from colliding, you're going to have to change this to 2000. You know what I'm saying? So this one goes all the way. Now it goes all the way to, if I can go all the way to the bottom here. Now it's going to go all the way to 1199, if I can get that correct. Takes a bit to get there, but you will get there eventually. Okay, too much. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some of them uh, just to illustrate what exactly what I'm saying. So I have read registers of, I'm oh, sorry, write registers of maximum 1,999. That's, that's all the registers I have for to write. And on this side here, since I ended at 1,999, I have to start here at 2000. So they are not overlapping. So naturally it goes all the way down to 2999. And if I decide to increase this by uh, two folds, let's say 2000, now I will have a total of, if I go, go all the way down, oops, too much. It will go all the way to 3999. So this I've exponentially increased it. But, but the takeaway is that, let's say, if I have allocated here 2,000, 2,000, I have a balance of 6,000 to go. So if I, if I, this is the max I could do, right? So you have a balance of, you have 6,000, you have 2,000 here. Oh, I'm sorry, here you can actually go uh, 8,000 here on the read, lots of spaces. So at the end of the day, the whole thing is that you can use a maximum of 10,000. So this one's, I'm sorry, let's put things into perspective. We start at 2. 2 here, 2 plus 6 is 8. So you can go all the way to, uh, I'm sorry, so it was 6. So you can go all the way from 0 to 2000 on the first block up to here. And the read can go all the way to 9,999. So this, all this uh, read and write, they have to add up to 10,000 at most. No more than that. So that's the maximum for this model of the ProSoft card, MPI56E-MNETC card. Other models have their own limitation. Please check the manual before you make those configuration. So once you do that and you have defined everything on your client side, how do you actually read your tags, right? So let me pull up a notepad here. On the PLC side of things, uh, when you do mapping or actually uh, transposing that into your tag, what you have to do is uh, you're going to have to do something like that. So this this will read uh, this will read your floating point, right? As a floating point. So this is defined as a floating point on the Allen Bradley PLC controller tag, right? I just make a fictitious tag, and you are reading mnet read data 20. So you're reading index number 20. So that's another thing I want to point out here. So although you start here at 2000 here, right? Previously it was 1000. Your index will always start at zero. So index 20 would be this guy here. This is the slot where you'll be reading from. So that's where your mnet. So let, let me show you another, another example here. So if I were to go ahead and slide this thing around and I've changed it, say I don't like 2009. Okay, I'll, I'll start at say to make a bit more random. So I start at 4,000 and I'm reading say 3,000 registers, right? 4,000, 3,000. So here you go 4,000 on my table and it goes all the way down and you are reading a total of 3,000 registers. So it goes for five, six, seven, seven, seven thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine, right? So all the way down to seven, nine, nine, nine. I'm not going to expand it, but just for simplicity. So when I, when the PLC program says this, read 20, again, you're looking at this, but your index location is different. So the bottom line of this is that to demonstrate is that you can change your internal register as much as you want, but your index will never change. So that's the beauty of it. So you don't have to revamp your program or anything to that capacity. Same goes for the uh, internal address bit. You can change all you want because this bit get affected. If, let's say, for example, if I change this to 3000, which is starting register, you can see all my internal internal address for the bit changes too. But you can specify that and you will still read that spot 
on the memory allocation. Okay, so let's try another one. Uh, let's say if you want to write, uh, let me see what I can write here. So let, let's say if you want to write to the uh, uh, from the uh, from uh, this uh, read. I'm sorry, yes, this is what you have to do. Zero, say bit zero, and you are writing uh, alarm, right? So if you want to write an alarm or rather a state, I guess, uh, auto manual, auto manual, you want to write the auto manual status to this particular one. So basically you read the bit, right? 107, you go all the way down, 107, 107. And you are reading bit zero from it, right? So basically you're reading from that MNET card, index 107, and you are writing bit zero into a PLC tag. That's how this is how you read overall a floating point and this is how you write a floating point okay likewise to write the data let's say if you want to write a bit you would flip it you will have to flip the other way and then say it's going to be one two three so what's going to happen here is that one two three will be now on the blue side because the blue side is your writing so one two three go all the way here one two three And bit zero for the sake of demonstration, that's 16 bit altogether, it's 14 bit 14. So we're basically writing the PIC auto manual status to bit number 14 on this particular register or internal register location. That's how you do it. And same thing for floating point. I'm sorry, over here you gotta have a write. This is a tag. Same thing here, it has to be a write, and you gotta flip it over because you're copying the value from here into in here. So I'm going to put it as, uh, say, 111, triple one. So over here, this is where it's writing to. Th those are the nuts and bolts. Uh, let me see what else I can say. So yeah, that's about it, I guess. So those are the things that you have to be aware of. Again, quick one. So this is a starting. This is a starting for read all the way to 3,000 registers in total, right? So it's 7999, and this is that. Start at zero and 2,001999. Cannot overlap read and write and changes to the internal register does not impact your program in any way. Anyway, this is a quick tip. I hope it helps. Other than that, have a good day. Bye.